Welcome to the Fast Leader Podcast, where we uncover the leadership life hacks that help you to experience breakout performance faster and rocket to success. And now, here's your host, customer and employee engagement expert, and certified emotional intelligence practitioner, Jim Rimbach. Need a powerful and entertaining way to ignite your next conference retreat or team building session? My keynotes don't include magic, but they do have the power to help your attendees take a leap forward by putting emotional intelligence into their employee engagement, customer engagement, and customer-centric leadership practices. So bring the infotainment creativity of the Fast Leader Show to your next event, and I'll help your attendees get over the hump now. Go to beyondmorale.com forward slash speaking to learn more. Okay, Fast Leader Legion, during episode 80, which was an episode packed with a lot of nuggets and of wisdom with Paul Maskell, Paul recommended our guest today's book, The Go-Giver, as one of his recommended books to read. Bob Berg was born and raised in Massachusetts, but as soon as he could, he got down to sunny South Florida. His dream was to be third baseman for the Boston Red Sox, except for one thing, any semblance of talent. So Bob became a sportscaster in radio, then in television, and then he got into sales and never looked back. And then he also moved on to the stage. Bob Berg, co-author of the international bestseller, The Go-Giver, and a much sought after speaker at sales and leadership conferences, is committed to inspiring the entrepreneurial spirit in all of us. He shows that companies, both large and small, that conduct their business the go-giver way are not only of much greater value to their customers, they are also significantly more functional and profitable as well. Bob is an advocate and supporter and defender of the free enterprise system, believing that the amount of money one makes is directly proportional to how many people they serve. Bob says his life is pretty much his business and vice versa. He's not married and has no kids, but he is a voracious reader, baseball fan, an unapologetic animal fanatic, and serves on the board of trustees of Furry Friends Adoption and Clinic in his hometown of Jupiter, Florida. Bob Berg, are you ready to help us get over the hump? Hey, I sure am, Jim. It's great to be with you. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate that. You know, I've given our listeners a little bit about you, but can you tell us what your current passion is so that we can get to know you even better? Uh, current passion is that we've put together a um, Go-Giver Sales Academy, where instead of me going out now and speaking to you know major companies, groups, organizations, as I always have, and still continue to, but but not as much. At, at 58, I want to get off the road uh, more than being on it. Uh, but there are groups of 12 people that we go very deep into their business and help them to become a lot more confident, communicate their value, and just have a lot more a business that's a lot more fun, a lot less stressful, and a lot more profitable. So that's it's really our passion right now and in, in the part of the business where we're really uh, uh, geared to. You know, there's some a couple of things that actually stood out as I was, you know, reviewing the book. And, you know, you had mentioned something about the go giver being congruent and even honors human nature. What does that mean? Oh, that's such a great question. Uh, you know, one of my favorite books, and I'm sure you've read it, and, and I'm sure our bookshelves are, are very similar, actually. Uh, but one of my favorites of all time, of course, was uh, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, uh, just a, an amazing classic. And one of the statements in there of all the many uh, amazing statements he made, I thought was the basic premise of his entire book. And that's where he said, ultimately, people do things for their reasons, not our reasons. And that is human nature. People are going to do things because they believe that, that it's, it's going to bring them closer to happiness than doing something else. Okay. I often say when I speak at a sales conference, nobody's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet. They're not going to buy from you because you need the money. They're not even going to buy from you because you're a really nice person who has a great product and, and you think they should have it. They're going to buy from you only because they believe that they are better off by doing so than by not doing so. So in the go-giver philosophy, which is basically that shifting your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, Jim, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing value to others. We understand that it's not about us. Great leadership is never about the leader. Great influence is never about the influencer. And great salesmanship is never about the salesperson. It's always about the other person focusing on them, bringing value to them. And that's why John David Mann, my awesome co-author, and I often say that money is simply an echo of value. It's the thunder, if you will, to values lightning, which means the focus must be on pleasing 
the other person understanding, again, they're going to do what they feel is in their best interest. You know, thanks for sharing that. And there's something that stood out to me when you started talking about that, even that value component is that I think so many times that we potentially inside of us value certain things and then we find it difficult to believe when others don't value the same thing. Uh, You are so right on the mark and it's all about belief systems. Uh, What is a belief? Well, a belief can be defined as a subjective truth. Uh, In other words, it's the truth as we understand the truth to be, which doesn't mean it's the truth. It means it's, it's a truth. Now, sometimes Uh, or it means it's our truth. Sometimes our truth and the truth are the same, but often they're not. And the reason why is because as human beings, we all see the world from our own unique individual viewpoints. It's based on our belief systems, which we can, which we could also say is, is our unconscious operating system. Our belief system is, is a combination of upbringing, environment, schooling, news media, television shows, movies, popular culture, cultural mores, everything that comes into our life. But as you know, our basic belief system is pretty much set in stone by the time we're little more than toddlers. And everything that comes into our life after that is is basically added onto that foundational premise. And as human beings, unconsciously viewing the world in a certain way We also think that everyone else sees the world the same way. How could it be any different, right? It's all we know. This is why you hear people say things like, oh, everyone loves that. Or nobody would like that. Or, you know, if you've ever heard someone say, maybe you've said it, I know I have far too often. Oh, I would never treat someone like that, right? Well, no, we wouldn't because it's not part of our belief system, but that's not true for others. And so what happens is as salespeople, we tend to believe that, or as leaders uh, inspiring a team of others, we tend to believe that what we value is what everyone else values. You know, it's like the person who was trying to sell me a copying machine and he came in and all he talked was talking about was the price. Now, you know, I had had, I had just moved from a big office into my home office. This is maybe seven or eight years ago. Great move. I'm glad, so glad I did it. But with a copy, but, but I remember my office manager used to have to do this thing with the copying machine that she had to, to, to fill in this information and send it into them every month. And, and if you know me, you know, that just is not something I'm going to do in a million years. So my question to him, and he had a, a sales assistant with him, uh, who wasn't saying anything. And, and, and I said, You know, I asked, well, would I have to fill in that information? You know, I really don't want to do that. It's not something he just kept coming back with price. He wasn't asking me questions about what I wanted. Okay. He was telling me about the great price. And, and, and of course, you know, Hey, there are people who buy just on price, not many. Okay. Usually it's not a price question. It's a value situation, but some on price, some people are status buyers. Some people are, you know, I'm a convenient convenience buyer. In other words, I'm lazy, but he never took the time to ask. And, and I was just about to politely end the interview when he finally, his assistant couldn't hold back any longer. And she said, Mr. Berg, if we could put into the green, the agreement that you'll never have to check the you know, whatever that stuff, would you buy it? And I said, absolutely. I do it right now. And they made the sale. What he didn't realize that his trainee did was it wasn't about him and what he found to be of value. It was about me, the customer, and what I found to be of value. And one quick thing, this is why I define sales as simply discovering what the other person wants, needs, or desires and helping them to get it. You know, Bob, you're talking about... (laughs) To me, you're talking about something that is somewhat universal from the perspective of it doesn't matter if we're referring to needing to make a register ring or wanting to make a register ring or, you know, have a deposit put into your particular account from a sale is these things apply even when we're starting to talk about working cross functionally within an organization, when we're Mm -hmm. starting to talk about, you know, being part of a group and, you know, talking about moving, you know, things forward and change initiatives and all of those things. I mean, it, it applies universally. Right. Everybody wants to do this. (laughs) Right. right. Well, here's the thing. One of my one of my um, old uh, heroes, Harry Brown, the late Harry Brown, used to say, everyone seeks happiness. And then he said, now, aside from that one thing, you cannot use the words everyone or anyone or no one. Only that. Other than that one thing, everyone's different. 
but everyone ultimately seeks happiness. And that's why the go-giver methodology, if you will, uh, is congruent with human nature because it's honoring the fact that that person uh, is going to make decisions based on their own values, which is how it should be. Now, you also mentioned something about um, a good or a, a question being a bad first question. Oh, oh. <laughs> now, I, I know that we do that a lot. I mean, just meaning as as people, we often just jump to a question that's first that surely, and oftentimes maybe even not be asked or should be like fifth or sixth down the line. What is a good first question to you? Yeah. Well, in the, in the story, um, I think you're referring to when when um, when uh, Joe, the protege, was asking, uh, you know, was talking about, uh, you know, making a killing or something, making a lot of money, and that that's the 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 uh, number one thing to to ask: Will it make money? And Pindar, the main mentor, said, "Well, asking if something will make money isn't a bad question. It's a great question. It's just a bad first question. First, ask." Will it serve? And the question was, and the, 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 the statement asked first, will it serve is meant twofold. One, uh, is it something that's, that's a good thing, right? Is it a good thing toward the advancement of life? Is it something that will help people that, and that's always a good first question. The second thing though, is, is there a market for it? Is it something people will want? You can have the greatest, you know, invention in the world. Uh, but if no one wants it, then you know you're going to have an expensive hobby. You're not going to have a business. And what happens is it's not that. And when someone says, "Well, but I need to make money," well, yeah, of course. A part of business is making money, a lot of money. That's wonderful. You provide a service, you provide value, you make a lot of money. But asking if it will make money as a first question is sort of like driving down a highway at high speed while looking in the in the rearview mirror. It's the wrong question to ask first, because if it doesn't serve, if it doesn't have value to the marketplace that people understand and embrace, uh, you're not going to make money. That's for true. I'm talking about wrong direction and getting on the right direction. A lot of times we use quotes on the show in order to help us, you know, find that right point to be headed on to and, and path to follow. Is there a quote or two that stands out for you that helps you on the right path? Well, uh, there's there's a quote I've been you know saying since I first started in in business and it's 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 been I guess the underlying premise of everything that I've that I've, I've taught I guess as a speaker and an author uh, and that is that all things being equal uh, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know like and trust and I think that when we can keep that quote in mind, whenever we're about to embark in a new relationship, uh, whether business or personal, what have you, um, uh, we're, we're going to stay on the right track because we, we've got to know it's about the, you know, it's about the people Te you know, you look at technology and you look at new leaders coming into the, into the fold and they've got this wonderful technology at hand. But what they've got to understand is that even with the best technology in the world, leadership is never about the technology. It's always about the people. The technology is simply a, uh, a tool. Jeff Colvin wrote a fantastic, fantastic book uh, called People Are Underrated. And what his premise was in this book, that is technology continues to advance, which it will, and will continue to do so many things not only better than, than humans can do it, but that humans can't even do. It's still going to be, the, the key qualities of a leader is still going to be, uh, you know, uh, empathy, gratitude, uh, team building, collaboration, all those human things is so important. And as long as we remember that, then we never put the technology first. We let the technology be the servant, not the master. That's a good point. Now, I know along the lines, even when you started talking about moving and, you know, finally realizing your dream to be third baseman of the Boston Red Sox <laughs> wasn't going to happen. Uh, you know, we have a lot of humps to get over in life. Mm. Uh, is there is there a time where you had to get over the hump and it really made you a better person that you can share? Oh, s n numerous times, both personally and in business. I'd say in, in business, I learned a very important lesson in the uh, 
mid to late nineties. Uh, this is when the, the technology revolution was really taking place. Okay. We didn't have social media yet, but we were really starting to have a very technology based form of humanity happening. Right. And I'm not a technical, a technical person, uh, by nature. I'm not. And so it, it, you know, it scares me and I didn't want to I had a very successful business at the time that did not depend on technology other than emails. I really needed nothing. You did not need to use technology at all. Okay. And I got complacent. And I knew, and I was told by people who knew that you're going to have to learn some of this stuff. You're going to have to at least be familiar with it and comfortable. And you know what? I I got a little cocky and was feeling, you know, a little, little too much like I had things together. And, um, uh, you know, I, it, it really set me back. You know, it's interesting in the, in personal, the field of personal development, which you're in and I'm in, and, and many people listening to this are, are in as teachers, as students, we're all students, you know, we're all, there's, there's sort of a, we, we have our own form of political correctness, if you will, certain things that are said and just accepted and, uh, as dogma. And one of them is that you've, that, you know, I love change. You know, I, 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 even if it's uncomfortable, I still love it because it helps me grow. You know something, Jim, I hate change. I like things the way they are when they're going well. <laughs> and yet I, I, I knew I needed the change and I resisted and I didn't do it. And it really set my business back. And over a couple of years, I got really, really left behind and I had to kind of regroup and rebuild my business. And, you know, eventually I did and that was fine. And now I've got a great team around me and they know technology. And now I really enjoy the technology part. No, don't, not the, not the, you know, I couldn't program a thing, but the, 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 the usability of it. Well, I know for uh, all of us, it's sometimes we get stuck in that, you know, habit of uh, things going well. Uh, and oftentimes, you know, oftentimes it's the outside that causes us to uh, disrupt ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's the part that's painful, I think, of change is waiting to that point to occur. Uh, but mm-hmm. it happens, it does. So you talked about, um, you know, doing the online learning uh, in order to be able to maybe not, you know, hit hit the airways as much as you have been. Uh, and you have, you know, talking about working on the uh, board of trustees um, and still a baseball fan, which, you know, hey, hey, me too. Uh, what are some of your goals beyond that? Um, we're also, uh, aside from our go-giver sales Academy, we're building a team of certified go-giver speakers and coaches. So we actually, uh, we have them in several countries now and, uh, it's a growing team and basically they, they, uh, buy the rights to be able to teach all the go-giver, uh, properties, if you will, my, uh, I always say with, with quotation marks around it, my intellectual property, uh, because it's hard, for, hard for me to, to fathom that I would have intellectual property. If you knew me going to school, you'd, you'd know why. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, and so, so building that and, uh, it, it's just fun. You know, I have fun at work. So, you know, it's a, I don't, I don't have a lot of hobbies. I, I love, I do love baseball and every, uh, you know, a couple of times a year, I'll get down to Miami to catch a, uh, a Miami Marlins game. And I, I watch them on TV when I can. Uh, but I, you know, I'm a voracious reader. I absolutely, absolutely love reading. I love learning. It just fascinates me, but really, you know, my, my life is my work. I do love it. And that tends to be what, uh, you know, what consumes me in a very good way. On the fast leader Legion wishes you the very best. Now, before we move on, let's get a quick word from our sponsor. The number one thing that contributes to customer loyalty is emotions. So move onward and upward faster by gaining significantly deeper insight and understanding of your customer journey and personas with emotional intelligence. With your empathy mapping workshop, you'll learn how to evoke and influence the right customer emotions that generate improved customer loyalty and reduce your cost to operate. Get over your emotional hump now by going to empathymapping.com to learn more. All right, here we go, Fast Leader Legion. It's time for the Hump Day Hoedown. Okay, Bob, the Hump Day Hoedown is a part of our show where you give us good insights fast. So I'm going to ask you several questions, and your job is to give us robust yet rapid responses that are going to help us move onward and upward faster. Bob Berg, are you ready to hoedown? I am ready. I will do my best. (laughs) All right. So what do you think is holding you back from being an even better leader today? Oh, you would have to ask me something I can't answer uh, that fast. Um, 
it myself, I would be what's holding me back. What is the best leadership advice you have ever received? Oh, get around leaders who are great leaders and learn from them and keep and keep reading about it. What is one of your best secrets that you believe contributes to your success? I don't know if it's a secret as much as as a uh, as as something that I feel like I have a lot of, and that is a a sense of empathy for others. I can I can very easily relate to what others feel and communicate that. What do you feel is one of your best tools that helps you lead in business or life? One of my best tools uh, is that a physical tool, or you know, like a online or or just a. Uh, uh, a quality, whatever comes to mind. Uh, I would say it's, it's having just such a genuine caring about those people I lead. And I think that comes through. What would be one book that you'd recommend to our listeners? And it could be from any genre. Mm -hmm. The secret of selling anything by Harry Brown, B R O W N E written in the sixties as a manuscript pub published posthumously. It is the best book I've ever read on understanding human nature and um, and connecting that with selling. Okay, Fast Leader listeners, you can find links to that and other bonus information, which would include a link to Bob's first chapter of The Go-Giver on the show notes page at fastleader.net forward slash Bob Berg. Okay, Bob, this is my last hump day hold on question. Imagine you were given the opportunity to go back to the age of 25 and you've been given the opportunity to take the knowledge and skills that you have now back with you. But you can't take everything back. You can only choose one. So what skill or piece of knowledge would you take back with you and why? It would be the knowledge that I don't know anywhere near as much as I think I know. And I would take back the quote. I would paraphrase the quote by Mark Twain and say that what could get me into trouble is not what I, not what I don't know, but what I think I know that just ain't so. Bob, it was an honor to spend time with you today. Can you please share with the Fast Leader Legion how they can connect with you? Uh, sure, Jim. And it was a pleasure to, to spend time with you. I'm honored to be on your program. My uh, best place, the best place to reach me is just the go giver with no hyphen, the go giver.com. Everything is pretty much there right on the site. Bob Berg, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. The Fast Leader Legion honors you and thanks you for helping us get over the hump. Woo Thank you for joining me on the Fast Leader Show today. For recaps, links from every show, special offers, and access to download and subscribe, if you haven't already, head on over to fastleader.net so we can help you move onward and upward faster. <laughs>